end it! We are the belt! We are strong! We are sharp! And we don't feel fear! Hey guys, Pete here. I've got a new Expanse video for you today, but real quick, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Use their all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business at Squarespace. So today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite characters in the Expanse TV show, Kamina Drummer. I say this show because while there is a character named Drummer in the books, what we've seen so far has been a combination of several characters that were cut when they adapted the story for the screen. This has made her a bit of a wild card for people who've read the novels, and Kara G's amazing performance has elevated the character to being a whole that is truly greater than the sum of her parts. I'm going to talk about the character's journey and why I think she has turned out to be the most interesting example of what it means to be a belter. As far as spoilers, I'll be talking about things that happened through the fifth season of the TV series. If you're not caught up to the end of that, then this video might not be for you. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. I think the clip I opened the video with is the most memorable drummer moment, but it was probably when she executed the two Black Sky Belters on Tycho that I realized what an absolute scene stealer this character is. She rose to be the captain of the Behemoth and later Medina Station, but over the seasons, drummer has taken on a number of roles. When we first met her in Season 2, she was working under Fred Johnson as his second-in-command at Tycho Station. Right off the bat, in her first couple of scenes, we learn that she's competent, she has a presence, and that Fred Johnson trusts her to the point of making her his security chief. She's involved in the raid on Thoth Station, and then she oversees the repairs on the Rasinante afterward. She also starts to form a friendship with Naomi, who is the only belter on the Rossi. And in one of their early scenes together, we learn that she likes to hydrate with beers. We also pick up details about her background throughout Season 2. She was born and raised on Ceres. She worked the docks, where she eventually came into contact with Anderson Dawes. Over time, it sounds like she worked her way up to become a high-ranking member of his faction in the OPA, and she was there when Dawes found Fred Johnson, who in a low point after Anderson Station, basically came to the belt to commit suicide by Belter. She played a role in convincing Dawes to save Fred rather than killing him, which is what led to him staying in the belt and creating his own OPA faction as an Earther. At some point, Drummer broke with Dawes and decided to follow Fred to Tycho Station where we meet her. She plays a role in launching the Navu in an attempt to push Eros into the sun and helps take control of the nuclear missiles that were launched at it by Earth. Those, along with her loyalty to Fred, earn her a bullet in her belly, but she does even the score there before it's all said and done. The attempt to take control of the missiles was instigated by Dawes, who had approached her earlier where he came on strong, hinting that there is more than just a working relationship in their past, and it became clear that he was trying to get close to her trying to learn about the secret weapon that Fred had alluded to. All of this caused tension when Fred got a hold of the protomolecule sample through Naomi. He made the decision to tell Dawes about it because he wanted access to Cortazar, which Drummer couldn't believe because he had kidnapped the protogen scientist right out from under him. This causes Drummer to reconsider things in relation to Fred, but later she still takes a Belter fleet to recover the Navu and start the process of retrofitting it into the OPA's first warship. So the seeds are planted for a pretty complicated story at this point. Drummer is now the captain of the Behemoth, she's reunited with Naomi who has come on board to be the chief engineer, and they take on Ashford who is associated with the Anderson Dawes faction. For all appearance, Appearances, he doesn't show her the respect that she thinks that she deserves as the captain, and he does several things that seem to undermine her authority. Things take a turn when Clarissa Mao launches her plan to try to destroy Holden. She destroys the Sung Yoon and transmits the video of Holden taking responsibility in the name of the OPA and declaring that only the belt has legitimate claim to the ring. 
Even though Naomi tries to assure them that Holden would never do that, they're in a position where they have to do something before the UN retaliates, not just against the Rosinante, but also their ship, the Behemoth. So Drummer has to make the tough decision to take a shot at them to make it clear that they're not working together. That forces the Rossi to become the first ship to transit the ring successfully after Holden talks to Proto Miller. They do survive, but unsurprisingly, Naomi is upset, and that leads to her coming to the conclusion that she belongs on the Rossi, which over time we came to realize is a big loss for Drummer, who had developed deep feelings for her, and in respect for that, she just has to let her go. When the Martians decide to go into the slow zone after them, they warn the other ships not to follow. But Ashford and Drummer realize that this will create a situation where the Belters are shut out completely. So they decide to transit the ring with the Behemoth, and this is where she delivers that incredible speech with Ashford starting the beat and everyone chanting by the end. And they do transit, which earns the Belt a seat at the table. There's some tension over Drummer letting Naomi go, which in a roundabout way leads to Drummer and Ashford finding themselves pinned against farming equipment after the speed limit changed again. This is another amazing scene where we get to see them talk about their pasts, and then eventually realizing that there's nothing else that they can do, Drummer allows herself to be crushed so that Ashford could get free. That crushes her spine and leaves her without feeling in her legs. This doesn't stop her though because when Ashford takes over and gets the dangerous idea of shooting the ring with the behemoth's communication laser, she puts a mech together that allows her to walk again. She helps Naomi and Holden get back together in their effort to try to reach the bridge. When they're pursued by Diogo, who now has some power armor, she plans to sacrifice herself to take him out, but is saved at the last second and doesn't have to go through with it. The crisis in the slow zone comes to an end, and when you next see Drummer, she's healing and has become the captain of what is now called Medina Station. And we'll get to the next chapter in her life after a quick mention of today's sponsor, Squarespace. In an earlier chapter in my life, I used to work for a firm that built websites, and I found Squarespace to be really user-friendly. It was simple to jump right in and start to create a website, or you could put together an online store with marketing tools and analytics built in. For what I was looking to do, the video blocks were great. Just paste the URL and upload a custom thumbnail, and I appreciated that all the templates have built-in mobile websites. Just make it once and it looks great across all devices. While you're working, you can toggle the views back and forth and get the design just how you like it. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Pete Peppers to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So now Drummer is the captain of Medina, which is parked inside the slow zone. Because she got the ship through the ring, they were able to leave it there. They changed the name and are now in a great position to coordinate things once the blockade is lifted by the UN. Colony ships will be able to pass through the ring gates and access the worlds beyond, and Fred Johnson's faction of the OPA will be at the center of it. And even though her role is toned down in the fourth season, I think this is where things get really interesting. I mean, her scenes from the end of season two through season three had pretty much been a highlight reel, but here she has to try to work with the inners and the new peace treaty that Fred and Dawes negotiated. In a conversation with Naomi, she also lays out her feelings about Belters going through the rings and transitioning to living on planets. She believes that Belters belong in space. Within two generations on a planet, they'll be inners and will have forgotten their culture and roots. Naomi counters this with everyone has the right to decide for themselves, and while she agrees, you can see how much the idea bothers Kamina. She reconciles with Ashford, and they investigate an incident where everyone on board a UN colony ship were spaced. There are factions of the OPA that are against the peace treaty with the Inners, and they're carrying out attacks to send a message. Marco Inaros is brought to them for a reward, and they try to get answers out of him. They learn that he has something going on with somebody on Mars, but he shuts things down when he figures out what they're doing. They give him a trial with the leaders of three other factions there to judge, and it 
comes down where they're split, and Drummer has to use her deciding vote to let Marco live. She explains that she did actually want him dead, but understood that a civil war could break out if she went against the Black Sky and Golden Bow. This turns out to cause her real problems, and eventually brings about the end of her time working for Fred Johnson. Marco makes some moves that provoke the UN, they take a more active role in the slow zone, and then Fred works out a deal that she doesn't approve of. She makes some good points that Fred can't really counter, but he's able to pull the card about her letting Inaros live, and in the end she quits. Before she leaves, Ashford comes to try to talk her out of it, and they talk about the inner planet's history of imperialism and violence while looking at the Mormon paintings. She says she believed in Fred's vision of a free and independent belt, but now that they have reached that point, they're painting the same picture. They're playing with the lives of innocence in exchange for peace. She expected Ashford to take over her job, but learns that he's going out to try to kill Marco, and he offers her the job of XO on the Tynan for the mission if she wants it. She decides against it and tells him that she's getting away from all of it. She gives him a bottle of liquor as a present, which he gives back, saying, that they can share it together when he returns, and then they say goodbye. And it's the last time that they'll see each other because Ashford is killed by Marco in the season 4 finale. The fifth season starts out with Drummer in a much different place. She managed to leave her old life behind and became the captain of a small group of ships that get by through scavenging. The crew is more than that. They're a polyamorous family, which had been led by Oksana before they brought Drummer in. It's a tight-knit group with that added emotional connection, and she seems to care deeply for her partners. You see that they're getting by trying not to resort to violence, but will protect the territory they've carved out. When they come across a pirate that attacked a colony ship that doesn't want to cut them in, they attack and disable his ship. They eventually locate Ashford's ship, the Tynan, and discover his backup data core. When she goes through it, she hears the recording he made of Marco as his life was ending. This puts her on the path of revenge, and she tells her family that she wants to kill Marco so they can collect the bounty. They can see through this, though, and know that it's personal, and that it's extremely dangerous, and they are able to talk her out of it. After Marco's attacks on Earth and Tycho Station, neutrality isn't an option. Her family is forced to make a decision, join the Free Navy, or risk being hunted down, which isn't really a choice after all. And to make things more complicated, they have to do a crew exchange, which puts one of Drummer's family members on the Pella, and brings Corral, who is pretty much hostile, onto the Tynan. This is where Drummer really becomes the embodiment of the Belter struggle. There is nowhere she can go to get away from this. On the one side, she has a man who is an extremist, who has committed atrocities against humanity, and is responsible for killing people she was close to. On the other side, you have the imperialist powers that have subjugated her people and culture, the literal boot on their neck. It would go against the fabric of her identity to side with the inners, and if she were to go that way, she might just get herself and her family killed in the process. When said atrocities guy makes it explicitly personal and orders her to kill her good friend's crew and destroy their ship, she reaches a breaking point. She turns against the Free Navy, she turns the battle in the Rocinante's favor, and she knows she's risking everything while she does it. In retaliation, her husband's killed on the Pella, half of her family leave her in response, and she's left with nothing and nowhere to go at the end of Season 5. It's just a tremendous character arc from start to finish. A belter's belter through and through. A dock worker rising through the ranks as a verifiable badass, a competent commander with a moral compass, and one that understands the game enough to wonder if she wants to play it at all. An existence that's built on trying to decide between the lesser of two evils. I think of that scenario in the books where the corporate boss wants to cut pay by 3%, because that will improve their bottom line and it's not a lot of money, right? And the belters are just barely getting by as it is, so they say, what do you want us to do? eat 3% less food, breathe 3% less air, and then the reality is what are they supposed to do about it? We also get to see real humanity, intimacy, and depth in her connection with her family, only to see that tested by the reality around them. 
She was there to make sure the belt would be involved when the ring gates opened. And when she saw what that looked like, she walked away from it. She had a chance to take out Marco personally, but thought at the time that it would lead to more violence if she did. She worked closely with Anderson Dawes and Fred Johnson, both of whom rose to powerful positions. But in the end, she felt they lost their way once they got there. I've watched and rewatched this series more than any person should, and I'd be hard pressed to come up with a more interesting individual story. Drummer is the belt. She's the belt, and while there are other great belter characters like Miller and Naomi, they're somewhat disconnected from where they came from. And that isn't the case with Kamina, and I think that's a great place to leave things. I didn't really get into it because the show character took on a life of her own. Because the creators liked Kara G's performance so much, she just kept getting more stuff. She just sort of kept absorbing different aspects of characters they had to cut as she was becoming her own thing. One detail that's pretty funny is that Bull is one of the characters she replaced in Season 3. And when he was introduced in the show in Season 5, he basically took over the role of the original drummer when she was first introduced in the fifth book. They switched places. Mostly she's a combination of Sam, Bull, and Michio Pa, but the show's version of Ashford got some of their stories as well. Beyond working for Fred Johnson, she doesn't really have any of the book drummer. Let me know what you think about this character, what you like about her, why her story's so great, and if she's not the best belter character, who is? Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.